If you want Colts talk all year long, you're in the right place. Fires upfield into the end zone. It is caught. Jelani Woods. Touchdown. He's going to fire upfield. It's broken up. Tip picked up. And intercepted by the Colts. This is the official Colts podcast, giving you an updated look at what's new with the horseshoes. Colts have it. Interception. Two seconds left. And the Colts are going to win. In the Indiana Union Construction Industry Radio Studio, let's get the podcast started. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Colts official podcast. We are brought to you by our friends at WinBet. I am Jeffrey Gorman, back after a few weeks layoff, but usually here, and I'm glad they are, J.J. Stankovitz and Lara Overton. If you want information on this football team, I plead you now, follow them on Twitter, at Lara Overton, at J.J. Stankovitz. They have the ins and outs of what this football team is doing in this training camp. But I just got a blanket statement I just want to start with, guys. You're back. Yeah, I am back, and I feel good about this. But You I got seem a, rejuvenated. A little bit, a little fresh. You know, I got a little pop in my step. But I'm just going to say the blanket statement is I love to talk about what's going on in Colts camp, about some things and others. I just don't think it's even uh, my – my. What, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Is it my lane to, if I'm going to try and stay in my lane when I'm talking about Jonathan Taylor and what's going on with the Colts, I don't want to speak on behalf of Ursay, Chris Ballard, Shane Steich, and anybody in that locker room and stuff. So all I'm going to be doing is asking questions on that. So I'm just saying, let's enjoy what we have here in camp, not what we don't have here in camp, Lara. And we're going to find the good spots there. I'm convinced they're going to work everything out and everyone's going to be happy. But I just don't feel like going over a 20-minute dissertation on where we're at up to this point when so much good is going on this field. I agree because from a national level everybody wants to prognosticate and weigh in and have their takes on what's being said or you know almost try to uh, over assess certain things where this part of the season is where you are highlighting the guys who are on the field doing all the great work so that's what the purposes of this podcast is because there's a whole lot of good right now Ooh, in Colts. It's been a good camp, camp so far. It's great it's camp. Been a good camp when you look at what's going on on the field. Man, it's it's physical, it's competitive. Uh, but it's not um, it's not there there's not any uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Animos- I'm animosity. 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 Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Uh, there there's not animosity. Like Gardner Minshew, you know, slices and dices mm-hmm. the defense today and no one's, you know, slumping their shoulders or yelling, you know, Gardner's going to Anthony Richardson's the first guy to give him a high five. Like it, it's a fun vibe out here that the Colts have so far. And you mentioned Minshew, and he is, you know, kind of the leader in the clubhouse when it comes to setting the tone. Obviously, sure. running the OTA sessions the way he did, now coming out here to a place he's unfamiliar with, but he knows training camp. So we're going to get into the quarterbacks. Trust me on this one. Also coming up on today's show, we're going to get you up to speed on the Colts after these five training camp practices. Don't forget, we had a night practice that was full of energy, and they got another one coming up on Saturday at six to eight. Eight up here at uh, at Grand Park. We're Couple also, of full days in pads. Sure. First day in pads today. Today, the boys are back for real. We're also going to take a look at the offense with Anthony Richardson and the well, well spoken of earlier Gardner Minshew splitting the first team reps. We're also going to talk about how some top position battles are going. I see Michael Strawn out there making some plays. See the rookie Josh Downs out Ooh. there making some plays. And I bring up Josh Downs because he will be coming up on this podcast in a little bit. Casey Valier and I had a moment to uh, catch up with the youngster from North Carolina, and it's a good one. He's a good kid, not only that, a great guy off the field, but, boy, what a player, and we're going to get more into him. Finally, um, we're going to talk about those position battles on again. J.J., uh, uh, starting with you, Shane Steichen's trying to set a culture in any training camp as a head coach. as a, and, and, you know, first day at pads is so, so big in these rooms. Guys are starting to knock heads and everything. But the culture, and that goes to being, you know, on time for meetings and everything and knowing where you're at, he's a rook too when it comes to it. So far, so good. Almost a week through camp when it comes to Shane Steichen running this Colts uh, mini camp here, or excuse me, Colts training camp, rather, up here at Westfield. I think some of the things you look for with a first-year head coach are, you know, is, is practice crisp? Are there a lot of procedural penalties? Are guys getting lined up in the wrong place are they you know looking like they're not prepared and you haven't really seen any of that there haven't been a lot of penalties there haven't been a lot of you know coaches screaming at the top of their lungs for a guy to get in a drill and it's been pretty crisp and I think that comes from Shane Steichen setting that that accountability within the building you know it's coming from the head coach you got to be on it and if you're not we'll find someone else who is that mentality has really helped this team as you get through the early part of training camp, and Larry, I know you you were asking some questions today. Mm-hmm. 
in the press conference just about the intensity that it's now starting to foster. And you saw it on Saturday night in that first night practice that Jeffrey noted, the message from Coach Steichen the night before and then the day of were, of, of that practice. The message was, hey, guys, we're going to get after it. We're going to hit it hard to get a day off tomorrow, and then we're going to ramp things back up. And I thought that you had really seen a strategic ramp-up period of intensity because that's one of the things you have to be smart about in camp is you can't ramp things up too quickly because guys are just kind of progressing back in to fitness and get into playing shape after having the offseason training, getting back into, you know, making contact once again. And I thought that what you have seen, JJ, to your point, is that things have been really disciplined and guys respond really well. These practices move. They are a very rapid mm -hmm. pace. They're a demanding pace. And I think that the players are responding very well to that. I was on NFL Network for Back Together Saturday, and they were asking about Shane Steichen. And one of the things that I said that I've noticed, particularly in training camp, but even going back to OTAs, is that guys like to play hard for him. Mm -hmm. He makes guys want to play hard and be physical. He loves to use the word relentless is one of those pillars and I think you are seeing his team embrace that and embody that in the way that they are thriving in this increased intensity that we've seen over these last three days of work in particular I want to I want to ask you guys just we talk about these position battles which they love to follow but boy oh boy I want to stick on the defensive side of the ball if you guys can enlighten me just a little bit we got new faces on the defensive line we got an old face returning in the linebacker position in Shaq Leonard 53 who's been all over the field this training camp and the secondary which is young wow. sort of hobbled a little bit and stuff like that obviously coming out of OTAs with high draft picks so I just want to stick out for a second on the defensive side of the ball JJ I ask you this defensive line has to get back after the quarterback I mean Philadelphia yep. is Philadelphia. They've done what they did for years, and Steichen knows. He was part of that, that staff. This defensive line, led by DeForest Buckner in this camp, what do you see? I, I'm starting to see uh, some really good depth with that group. Th this defensive line needs to be eight deep. You need to be able to rotate guys in so when you get to the fourth quarter, you can finish. That was something that this defense did struggle with at times last year where they, they weren't able to put games away. You think about the Eagles game where Shane Steichen was the offensive coordinator. And, you know, Philly drives down, scores the game-winning touchdown with a couple seconds left on the clock. You, you know, getting after the quarterback. And not just the, – the problem last year for the Colts wasn't getting sacks. They were 10th in the NFL in sacks. But the consistent pressure wasn't quite there from the defensive line. And I think you can chalk that up to some depth issues. And you're starting to see now guys like, you know, Adetami Wadabare coming on. Taven Bryan had a, a pretty impressive – I went over to watch one-on-ones, and, and he started off with a pretty impressive pass rush. Um, you know, you're starting to see some of that come through. Dio Dangbo, Quiddy Pei. Uh, you know, Samson Nebuchadnezzar will be back out here at some point. He's dealing with a hamstring right now. But you're starting to see the, the makings of a defensive line that can go as deep as the Colts want it. One other quick thing on the D-line today, the last rep of one-on-ones – uh, the whistle blew on the other field. All right, hey, let's get back over here for 11 on 11. There's one more rep left. Grover Stewart just bodies his way in there and goes, I want to go up because it's Quentin Nelson on the other side. Oh, nice. And that was a physical rep. That was awesome to see. Um, I'm not smart enough to tell you who exactly won it, but it looked like they both won it uh, because they, they were going after it pretty hard, even up you know past the whistle on that play. I saw Quentin Nelson in the lunchroom give him a hey, Q. He gave me just the nod up. It wasn't even the nod down, so – you know, maybe he was still ticked off from the one-on-ones earlier. He didn't have much to say to me. Lara, we talked about this all offseason, the differential from takeaways from one year to the next. Yeah. And we saw last year, not a lot. year before, we had a ton, but that also a lot falls on the back of 53. This linebacker core, especially seeing him out there moving around, getting back to what we're used to as far as Shaq Leonard goes. And that's a conversation that I was just listening to from yesterday that Jeffrey, you had and Matt Taylor had with Shaq Leonard in which he was very candid about the process, the very diligent routine that it took for him to get back onto the field. Because think about those lingering questions that we had in June after not seeing Shaquille Leonard on the field since November, since that second surgery that he had. And we did not know what to expect when he reported to camp or how he would look when he got to camp, what type of pitch count he might be mm -hmm. on. And, you know, he said in the first day of media availability that he has to be honest and working with the training staff and working with the coaching staff and allow them to say, okay, this is what 
where we are for the day. We're at a good point. And then rather than his trying to plead his case to do more and more and more, he's certainly gained a bit of perspective because he was candid that first day and saying that I probably forced it last mm -hmm. year. I forced myself back. And he had a, an immense amount of pressure um, externally, but also even more so internally to want to make a contribution to this team. And I think it's been incredibly encouraging. There have been a few days in which they have limited some of Shaq's snaps in the full team period. But overall, for him to be at the level that he is and to see how much, how active he is in practice, I think is incredibly encouraging uh, working within this defense. He is he is a monster in terms of takeaways. He's also just a guy that other, that other teams, that offenses have to account for when he's on the field. So even just the amount of attention that he commands is significant as he is beginning to turn back into or kind of round back into form that you expect him to play at. Two quick things. This is the most fans have seen from Shaquille Leonard during this part of training days? camp. How many days? Uh, well, I don't, I'm, I don't know how many days. It's like a year and a half. No, I mean, really. it's longer than that. 2019, because remember, 2020, well, it was a COVID year. No one could show up to camp. 2021, he didn't participate until about midway through camp. 22, he was on PUP. And now 23. Yeah. He, this is the first That's time really he's been out point. there in the first week of training wow. camp. In, I mean, probably good 2020, pull. but JJ, uh, it, it's been a while. And then on, on top of what, Larry, you were saying about him testing the offense, I asked Gardner Minshew last week, like, okay, you've gone against him in games. Like, mm -hmm. what challenge does he present mm -hmm. you? And it's just like Gardner said, like, he, he's always there. Like, he's always in the right place, and he will deceive you into throwing him the ball. And Gardner's like, there's no better practice for a quarterback than going up against 53 when he's out there. So for Gardner Minshew, for Anthony Richardson, even if it's 7-on-7 seven seven and Shaq isn't quite ready to be out there in 11-on-11, 11 11, that's a really good benefit for these guys as Gardner's you know, getting used to his teammates and as Anthony's learning this offense in the NFL. And conversely... With the Colts defense, one of the things we heard Quiddy Pay talk about in terms of going up against Anthony Richardson was how demoralizing it is as a defense to try to wrap a guy like that up who has that degree of mobility. So you think about how great of a test this has been for that defensive front as we emphasize the need to disrupt the quarterback and improve upon the, you know, the sack numbers and the takeaways. This is the absolute best test of where that group is right now to have the type of competition that we're seeing. And then you look ahead to when you bring in Chicago and you have Justin Fields in here. Man, you feel that they should be well anticipating what Justin Fields is going to do because you have that type of mobility and dual mm -hmm. threat capacity with an Anthony Richardson and a Gardner Minshew. Really. And, and by the way, Anthony Richardson told us today he's been oscillating between about 248, 252 yeah. pounds. He's still moving like he's like yes. 240 out there. Uh, so you talk about not being able to bring a guy down. Like just that, that ability to – you know, you, a defensive tackle gets his paw on you in the pocket and you don't just immediately go down. That's That counts for something. Yeah. When when you're trying to navigate pockets as a rookie, and yeah, I, I feel like I see it from Joe Burrow a lot, where Burrow, he's like 230, and a defensive end or a tackle will get, it, get his hand on Burrow's leg and Burrow just glides off him. Wow. Like, you, you, if Anthony Richardson can be able to do that and be that kind of presence in the pocket where, okay, even if you get to him, even if you get a hand on him, you have to do a lot more to bring him down, and then he can roll out, you know, affect the play, roll out Kinda with a like scramble Josh drill. Allen. Like right, how many exactly, times do you like see Josh, Josh Allen, Allen make yeah, those type right. of plays. Like the same thing, and and then he just like you know guts you with a sixty yard bomb to Alec Pierce, oh, and you're like, ah, oh, we should have won that rep, right, but right, right. All of a sudden, there it is. There goes the ball into the end zone and for a have, touchdown. We haven't even talked about his feet yet because you know he's an exciting, you know, when he carries the ball as well. If there's a broken player, we're gonna, we're going to expect a lot of those this year out of Anthony Richardson. If there's, there's a play that breaks down and he's got six seconds behind and he still can't find a guy and finds a lane, look out for 40. I want to switch over to the quarterbacks while we're here. Is there anything that you guys, Larry, I'll start with you. Is there anything based on what you've seen up to this point that there's a direction for this quarterback battle? And we haven't even started at Buffalo yet, the first preseason game. I know it's the first week, but how's this thing ironing out as far as playing time in the in the preseason? And more importantly, September 10th. How, yeah. does, that, how does that iron out? Long way to go to September 10th. And what one thing we heard Coach Steichen say was they were going to continue to mix up those first team reps between Gardner and Anthony. And I think you will see that continue into, you know, leading up to the Buffalo game. And you'll see a clear indication next week of who's going to start that game and then how they will, you know, um, divvy up 
the reps in the game as well. And what I think is your, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but I think in terms of September 10th, you'll start to get a clearer indication of what the direction is when you get to those joint practices. Mm -hmm. And we heard Shane, Sy Shane Steichen say today um, just, you know, how much, how um, integral those are, how critical those joint practices are, the degree of work and the degree of assessment and evaluation you can get out of those type of joint practices. So I think we will start to see more clarity on the starting um, quarterback role come the regular season, come the, you know, kickoff to the regular season, that season opener, um, when we get to that point. But right now, I think the good thing is you've got a good problem on your hand in the sense that both of these quarterbacks, and then plus you have Sam Ellinger as well, but both Anthony Richardson and Gardner Minshew have shown the ability to be the leader, to command this offense, to be that starter. So now it's up to you know Coach Steichen and Jim Bob Cooter to decide who it's going to be when you do start to game plan for these three preseason games. Realistically, I think it's probably more so two preseason games. That third preseason game will look a little bit different because you're on a short week in Philadelphia coming off of the joint practice. So I think that Buffalo and, and Chicago, those two weeks are going to be more so telling. JJ, can I ask you, is it too early to say, hey, how does this guy's looking at defenses? How about the windows that he has to throw in, which were yeah. larger yep. in college, now they're smaller. When to tuck the ball, when to run. I, I, have you gotten any semblance of that from him, or is it just too early after five practices? So here's one thing I've liked from Anthony Richardson in the two red zone drills mm -hmm. that they've done. Uh, they started on Wednesday uh, last week with the first practice today, the Colts went back down into the low red zone for a period. On both those days, Anthony Richardson threw a ball out of the back of the end zone. And you might say, well, did he miss a receiver? Did he not see it? That Those plays where he just says, nope, move on to the next play. That th Those are just as encouraging to me as the on-time strike to a wide receiver over the middle. Because that tells me that he understands... NFL open is different than college open. Right. And especially in the red zone, it is more important to live to see another play, especially when you're working on first and second down, than it is to play hero ball and try to force something in there. Those little things, I'm, I'm going to write about that on Colts.com today on Tuesday. Those little things are encouraging to me to see from a young quarterback that, you know, again, and, and I asked him about it, and he said, you, you have to know the situation, you have to know you can't always be Superman out there. Uh, those little things are encouraging. I think when you see Gardner Minshew operate the offense, you can see it, it is at a different level because he's in year four, right? Or right. year five. This is his third year now with Shane Steichen. Like today, there, there's a play down in the red zone where uh, he, he just like operationally beat the defense by just knowing exactly what to do, when to get the ball snapped, and when to get the ball off. He got it to Kyle and Granson for a touchdown. Those little things like Gardner Minshew, that's where the veteran experience comes in. And now do you, have, you know, as the Colts start to sift through all this information, the talent of Anthony Richardson, the strides that he's making versus the, the knowledge that Gardner Minshew has and the playmaking ability that Gardner Minshew does have in his own right, um, how you balance that and then figure out who's going to be your starter. If they were to say, Lara, if they were to say, hey, we're going to figure this out, but we're starting the season with Gardner Minshew. Mm -hmm. Is he, as a 21-year-old, and of course I'm talking about Anthony Richardson, poised enough to understand that yes. if something like that, that were to happen? Well, uh, there's one thing I never doubt about the Anthony fans, Richardson. The fans will hate it, Larry. We know well, that. But I'm just talking about the coaching staff and the player here. One thing I will not doubt about Anthony Richardson is his maturity. Right, JJ? Mm -hmm. Like, that's one mm -hmm. thing that he has exuded mm -hmm. through the entire pre draft pro process, through all of the time that the Colt, Colt scouts spent with him, coming into the building for, you know, the uh, meetings that they had, you know, all of that. And then the way he conducted himself upon being drafted and then getting right to work. And the questions that he was asking as the veterans have been around, you know, the day that Antoine Bethea and Edger and James were in the building meetings and all the rookies, Anthony Richardson's question was about becoming a better leader. And, you know, uh, just in terms of building leadership and what you need to do in terms of uh, garnering the respect of your teammates in the locker room, those were the things that he cared about. So I, I don't – I never will question the the maturity of Anthony Richardson to handle something like that type of on-field personnel situation, especially because it seems like he has 
incredible respect, admiration of his head coach and of his coaches. It seems like that they have established, he and Shane Steichen, a very strong rapport. So I do think if that were the decision to be made, that Anthony Richardson would know that that is for the greater benefit of this football team and for his long-term development as a quarterback in the NFL. You can do all the scouting you want of these guys. The Colts obviously extensively scouted Anthony. They met with him uh, in Florida and Indianapolis and you know all over the place. You don't really know until you get him in the building, right? You don't really know until you're, he's out on the field here and how he interacts with teammates. And nothing that he has done has shown itself to say that the moment is too big for him, that the responsibility is too big for him, that the mental load of being a top five picked quarterback is too big for him. He's just, he seems so eminently coachable out there. Um, you know, you going back to the thing about asking questions and like Cam Turner is talking about how he's just constantly texting him and, you know, what, what about this? What about that? Like, and, and Cam Turner is like, that fires him up. Like he's doing the same to Shane Steichen. Like Mm -hmm. he is, he wants to learn. And, you know, some quarterbacks who go through the, the, the typical development, right. Of like, you're going to these elite 11 camps Mm -hmm. and you're, you know, you're, you're trained since the age of five to be an NFL quarterback. Anthony didn't have that. I mean, yeah. He was going to high school to train to be a firefighter. Right, right. And, uh, you know, all of a sudden he develops into a very good quarterback prospect, uh, four-star recruit, all that. But um, he, the, his development has not been the traditional quarterback development. And I think that benefits him because of his personality, where he, he wants to learn. He's not set in any way, but he also knows how much he needs to learn. He's not coming in saying, yeah. I got all the answers. I did things this way, so I want to do it that way. He's coming in and saying, just like, hey, teach me. Teach me, because I want to be great, and I think you guys are the right people to make me great. Also, who's the first person when Gardner Menchu makes a great play or com- completes an incredible pass to celebrate him? Anthony Richardson yeah. and, and vice versa. Like, I think he has an immense respect of Gardner and also knows that Gardner's only going to make him better. They have that, you know, that mutual respect of one another. Also, going back to your point about Anthony Richardson training to be a firefighter when he was in high school, yeah. the program that he went through. If I'm in a burning building and that guy shows it, I'm like, <laughs> I'm good. Like, yeah, how, good. Many, yeah. how many yeah. bo- bodies yeah. can he, like, toss on a you shoulder and haul you know, down a stairwell? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so just, I mean, yeah, you're I just, good. I think, I think of the Simpsons bit. <laughs> where Jose Canseco can't play softball because he's constantly running into the burning house and he's carrying out the washing machine and, and the dishwasher and all that. Like, yeah, I think, Anthony, your house is on fire. He's not going to save you and your dog. He's also going to save your appliances and your TV. The car on and his the back. Car yeah. On it. yeah, he's got the car he's pulling out. Yeah, yeah, you're going to be fine. We uh, The best is yet to come at that position. I promise you that one. J.J. Stankovitz, at J.J. Stankovitz on Twitter. Lara Overton, at Lara Overton. My name's Gorman. I want to bounce around camp a little bit. I love the position battles. L.O., I'm starting with you because you get lost in the forest of Redwoods called the tight end group Good right God. now. Good God. I mean, those are some big gentlemen and out there. Will and Mallory's fr- back there? There it is. Like, a fresh he came face. Off pop? I know that that IU connection was going to come out here. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying talk a little bit to us about this, the battles that are going on for playing in time with this talented group. And now you have Jelani Woods, who's battling a little bit of a hamstring issue, so he's had some time limited of late. A few different things of note. Man, Kylan Granson has continued to do what we saw in OTAs and minicamp. JJ, what was uh, Gardner Minshew's yep. description? Shifty? Uh, Gar- his- so... Quote, Kylan's got juice. He can get open. He's got a little shake. A and little as Gar- shake. And as Gardner said that, he kind of shimmed his shoulders, too. <laughs> he's got a little shake. He's fast. He's smart. He knows how to run routes. He knows how to win. He's a great guy to throw to. Which, of course, you know, Kylan jokingly is like the little shrubbery right, among right. those Redwoods. But, like, he's different than what you're getting from those larger guys like the Jelani Woods and Mo Ali cox and Drew Ogletree. So you're excited, too, by Drew Ogletree being back out here. One of the hands down the easiest guys on this roster to root for after what he went through. He was last year's camp standout, played one preseason game in Buffalo but before tearing the ACL in the joint practices against the Lions. He's back. I mean, and then Will, obviously the rookie in there. They, uh, I mean, it's it's crazy just the amount of competition you're getting out of one position group. Um, it's going to be really, really interesting because you're going to have to have guys that bring different skill sets into those positions or uh, into that position itself. And I think that you're going to see a lot. You'll see a lot of work from that group when you do get into 
the preseason. And what's exciting about that is from a game plan standpoint for Jim Bob Cooter and Shane Steichen, man, there's so many different ways we can utilize these guys. We have a lot of different weapons that we can work with, especially in complement to these quarterbacks that we have. So, I mean, man, when we get to the preseason, I think this is this is time for all of those guys to really shine and show what they're able to bring. Did you catch what Jim Bob Cooter mentioned uh, last week? He's sort of like, when you think about your five going out on routes on a play, your five players, it's kind of like a basketball team. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you need to have a variation of body types so you're not just doing all the same thing. And you think about the variations the Colts can have between the wide receivers, the tight ends, and the running backs – you got a pretty decent basketball team out there. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you know, I mean, obviously you got Mo Alley Cox. We don't have to go through that again. Did you know he played basketball? Oh, um, for Shaka yeah. Smart. Yeah. yeah. How about <laughs> that? Yeah, never talk, never covered that one before. Um, but you know, just the you know Alec yeah, Pearson. Yeah, Mo, Mo's like your power forward. Yeah. And, yeah. Grantson's you know, maybe your shooting guard. Right, but like, like or Grantson could be mm. your you know Michael Pittman could be your small forward. Yeah. Granson could be your shooting guard, but you got to get Alec Pearson Guys, there somehow. I mean, I love it. Josh Downs is your Isaiah point, McKenzie is yeah, a point guard. Point. Yeah, I love it because I sit in this lane and I just go, ah, I'm safe and sound right here. Lara, I'll start with you. How many tight ends are making this roster this year? Oh, I uh, three. I think four. Four. You going four? I, okay. It could be five. Wow. It, could, it could totally okay. be five. Really? You could totally make it work. Three, four, or five. Don't be surprised. Once it, once you get down into the probably beyond the the three. Yep. You're looking at those guys are now competing with the wide receivers, with the running backs. For specials and for stuff? Sp yeah, yeah. You know, do you keep three quarterbacks because of the new quarterback mm -hmm. rule uh, that's in place with the emergency quarterback? You can, you know, have them on your roster, not, you know, uh, I forget exactly how that rule goes. But essentially, you can keep three quarterbacks and, and not have to worry about uh, the roster spot. The I'm roster doing. spot, right, yeah, right. essentially, on game day. So, Excellent. Uh, you know, how does that shake out? How does running back shake out with now Zach Moss? Being out for six weeks, Shane Steichen said today uh, he could still be in play yeah. for the season opener. Season opener is in five weeks and five days from now. Um, so, you know, the Colts are not ruling him out there, but he obviously won't be out on the field for a little bit. But, um, I mean, Deion Jackson, actually, I feel like people underestimate how much experience he has. And, I mean, he has – his been, third year. Exactly. And, I mean, think about it. This is a guy who had the scepter from Good Morning Football. He, sure he got did. the yeah. angry run scepter. That's like, right. He's been a big playmaker. Evan Hull, I think, has been one of the impressive rookies of this training camp, too, with his versatility coming out of the backfield. Yeah, so you're, you're looking at – you know, as you're, you're starting to figure out roster spots, yeah. which, by the way, that's in four weeks. Like, it's actually going to come up quick. I'm yeah. not saying that to be like, oh, it's right. far off. That's going to happen fast. That will be here before uh, you know it. And, you know, you're you're going to figure out now who are going to be special teams contributors, that tight end room. You're going to have to have some guys who can contribute on teams. We've seen Kylan Granson do that. I think, you you know, Drew Ogletree might have been on track to do that last year, too. Mm -hmm. um, we'll just kind of see how that all shakes out. Okay, guys, the young man who's coming up next, we had a chance to sit down with him, Josh Downs. I want to start Josh there. Josh First Downs. Josh First Downs. I love it. We're number one on his back. Uh, Lara, start with you. The, the battle. We've got a veteran, a guy who's done it well in Buffalo and Isaiah McKenzie. And now this rookie everything, this quick twitch, this streamlined runner, this uh, you know incredibly successful ACC talent called Josh Downs, mm -hmm. who a lot of people are saying was a steal at 79 overall. How does that position battle uh, wear out over the next month? I mean, and time will tell. And Isaiah McKenzie is a consummate professional. He's been incredible to work with just to kind of watch in terms of how he conducts himself on the field and the meeting rooms, all of that. He also also brings uh, a really exciting element to the return game as well. Uh, he could be a factor right there. I think that – I mean, do you think that there – J.J. space for both these yeah, guys? Yeah, they're, they're I think two so. different I mean, players. I really do. Yeah. I do think that – but I think that there are similarities. I think that you can use them in similar capacities. I get that. But I do think that you – I mean – you knew what your plan was going into the draft when you made a commitment to Isaiah McKenzie and then drafted Josh Downs. There's an intention behind having both of these guys within this offense. And, and even just seeing them out here, the way that they're being used is different. Mm -hmm. You're able to do different things with Isaiah McKenzie than you are Josh Downs. You know, McKenzie being kind of a guy who you can get him in motion behind the line of scrimmage. We saw him do that a lot in Buffalo. Um, you know, that's that's not a, anything new about his game. Josh Downs, a guy who you know, is so good at getting open and just finding space, um, you know, really good on option routes, that type of stuff. But McKenzie's also a guy who you just get the ball in his hands, he can make something happen. So I think there's absolutely space for both those guys because, yes, they're both slot receivers. Yes, they're both 5'8", five, 5'9", five, 
Um, but you can do different things with them that I think benefit the offense. I can't wait to watch what those guys do. And I'm not talking about the battle, just how they can both, like you guys said, individually They're help playmakers. this offense. Yeah, yeah. All right, say no more. Earlier, he was walking off the practice field. Casey Vallier and myself had a chance to sit down. Here's the rookie out of North Carolina, Josh Downs. Casey Vallier, I'm so happy. I'm excited. We're talking to this young man. Should have went higher than where he did in the draft and a special player. And if you don't believe me, you're going to find out this year, Colts fans. I'm talking about number one in your hearts, number one on the roster, Josh Downs from North Carolina. So far, so good. I, and, and the thing I like about you is I followed your career. I got people down in North Carolina in, in the football program. You're built for this. Mm-hmm. You knew this was the next step. You knew that early on in your career in North Carolina. And it's, hey, it's time to go to work. Your father, Gary, with a uh, football history behind yes, him. Obviously, Dre Bly, your uncle. Mm-hmm. But you knew you were going to get to this point. You feel comfortable out there? Uh, yes, sir. I mean, it's, it's a blessing to be out there. Um, had a little hiccup in the offseason. Had to take OTAs off. But I'm um, just glad to be out there with the guys. I'm glad to be in this organization. So, um, yeah, my dad and my uncle both played in the league. So, uh, them kind of already being there basically made it a precedent for me. And I was like, I got to get there, too. So, I feel good out here, and I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. And, and a fun fact for you Colts fans out there, I, I, I want to ask a question that's your roommate here in camp is the fourth overall pick, Anthony mm-hmm. Richardson. For are sure. you nudging him at all when you guys are talking ball saying, bro, I'm open on this play every time. <laughs> Look my way. Hey, I mean, I, I say it sometimes, but I uh, really try to just um, keep the convo off the field, you know, uh, just trying to know him more as a guy, just talk to him kind of as a brother. Um, get to know each other more. So, I mean, we still in those stages because we both got drafted about uh, two months ago. So, still getting to know him each and every day. Um, we're getting closer. So, uh, I appreciate him being my roommate because he's probably going to be my quarterback. Um, and, yes, yeah, it's, it's been good so far. Now, you talk about the situation with the family involved in football, but you also come to a, a spot here with the Colts where Reggie Wayne is your position coach. Having all those voices in there, how much has that really kind of helped you kind of grow in your, your early NFL career to this point? Yeah, I'd say, I mean, every rookie has some trouble. So uh, just kind of just seeing different coverages and um, different ways to get open on man-to-man from Coach Reggie Wayne because he, sh- he should be gold jacket. <laughs> and then uh, my dad's been here before, so telling me take every day of camp one day at a time. Um, you can't just dwell on the last day or look forward to the next because camp is a tough it's a tough few practices, tough months. So um, just got to keep your head on straight, um, keep going, keep God first. So I feel like having all of my corner helps. Now, one of the things you were talking about, Jeffrey said earlier, you should have been drafted higher. It kind of adds that extra chip. You look at this team, there's a lot of question marks nationally. You got a new coach, potentially new quarterback. How much do you kind of relish kind of being that underdog, you know, as you come into your first NFL season? Yeah, I mean, it was kind of the same way when I went to North Carolina. Everybody used to ask me, why did I choose that? And I just kind of was – I want to just try something new, try something different. So uh, same kind of thing. I uh, felt like uh, this is a similar situation to that. Um, but we got a lot of guys on the team that's ready to work, ready to win. So happy to be here, man. I keep saying that, but I really am. So um, I appreciate all the coaches. And, I mean, even though I didn't get drafted as high as I want to, I feel like I'm in the right place. I'm in a good situation. Um, I, I should be able to play early. So And head coach Shane Steichen, offensive coordinator Jim Bob Cooter, they know you're in the right spot too. How's this offense looking to you? You're an elite slot guy coming out of college mm-hmm. and hopefully in the pros as well, playing that slot position that is so unique. Their offense, how does it, uh, you know, conf- how does it collide gracefully with your game uh yeah they i mean they have a lot of routes and uh plays that feature the slot so um don't want to get too much in this scheme and all that but uh they got some good plays for the slot they got some good plays for the outside guys as well so um there's opportunities there you just got to take them um and when the ball comes your way you just got to execute so i feel like that's the main thing we talked about anthony richardson you know ad nauseum coming fourth overall pick but gardner Minshew, we saw it today with you guys you had a touchdown today Mm -hmm. had an incredible catch yesterday gardner Minshew leading this offense is obviously helpful for young guys like you from a guy who's been playing that quarterback position for a few years yeah i mean he um he gives me tips just helps me um on little things that differ from college to the league um, I asked him different questions about coverages and different plays. So he told me a few days ago, if I need anything, just come to him and ask. So, I mean, I appreciate him a lot. He's been there. He's played with A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. He's played in Jacksonville. So he's, he's played with a few good teams, a lot of good players. Um, so he knows, what, he knows what good looks like and he knows what great looks like. So um, definitely using him a lot, just being a vet, asking him questions. Now, for those who did not see – you know, your career in North Carolina, what are you trying to show the fans that are out here at camp and then as preseason and regular season rolls around, who is Josh Downs? Uh, I mean, I just want the fans to know I'm a guy that gives them my all. I uh, feel like uh, me as a player, I can get open on anybody. I feel like when it's man-to-man, 
um, come my way. I feel like I'll get open. On, and even if it's zone, I feel like I'll get open. Uh, but, yeah, just a guy that uh, plays hard for his team. He's going to go out there, give it his all, play with a lot of passion. What's, what, what separates you in your game? I think I know the answer, but I'm going to let J.D. answer this one. Quick twitch and inline speed is incredible. Mm-hmm. Change of directions, everything when you're, when you're a wide receiver yeah. in this league. What's going to separate you in your game? I feel like me just being, a, um, as well, those things you said, but also just being competitive. I feel like I'm real competitive, and I don't like to lose. So um, when I'm going up against somebody, I take it personal um, every single time. So um, even little things, if a DB talks trash, I take that extra personal. Um, just certain coverages I take personal. So uh, I feel like just everything on the field, I'm coming out there with a chip on my shoulder, playing extra hard. Um, every rep is every rep is a game rep. Every rep is a money rep. That's how I look at it. So. Um, I don't take stuff for granted. I'm, I'm trying to win every single time I'm out there running around. As a true freshman, it kind of reminds me of your college career a little bit. As a true freshman, you had a taste. You had a mm-hmm. successful taste. Then you go into your sophomore year, record setting. Mm-hmm. Like, boom, it's on. That's the sort of stuff that's needed out here. Are you? Does, does that come in your mind as far as got to win every play, got to be there early and stay late in the meetings? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'd say that. Um, but can't look too forward into the, um, the outcome. I just got to go out there every day and work. Um, and when the, when the ball comes my way, it comes my way. Um, can't force anything. So I feel like for me, it's just getting better each and every day. I'm still learning. Still a, still a rookie at the end of the day. This is like my fourth practice or fifth practice. So because um, I didn't really do OTAs versus the vets. So I'm still I'm still getting used to it, getting learning. So I feel like me just um, going out there, get better each and every day. Um, I got vets like Isaiah McKenzie and Michael Pittman in the room. So guys like that, um, asking them a lot of questions, just trying to figure it out. Now, how helpful has Isaiah McKenzie been? I mean, essentially, he's doing a lot of the same exact thing. He's a returner. Mm-hmm. He's also in that slot. How, how helpful has Isaiah been at this point? Oh, uh, yeah, he's been very helpful. Uh, he's really like, like a big brother to me. Um, so I feel like uh, he's, he's very supportive. I mean, everybody knows we're competing with each other, but uh, very supportive. I feel like in the room, me and him probably together the most. Um, I'm really always with him. He's always with me. Uh, we cracking jokes, playing around. So I feel like um, Isaiah's always there for me. And uh, if I have a question about certain coverages, just different things, he has an answer, and then sometimes he asks me uh, what I see. So even though I'm a rookie, he's he going to ask me because he has a lot of respect for me. So um, I feel like we, me and him have a good relationship early on, and we really just met. So I feel like um, it's just going to keep going up from here. Now, final thing for me, you, when you look at an offense, you want to have a d- bunch of different ways to kind of do things. And you got guys like Michael Pittman, Alec Pierce on the ends. But how important are you and Isaiah McKenzie going to be to this offense to kind of create – differences for defenses yeah i feel like uh, a lot of intermediate um quick routes and stuff like that that's more of our uh our cup of tea so i feel like um routes where you got to get open on um is sort of our thing maybe like third and five set third and seven like yeah. things like that um we're more needed there um and then P- alec he's real fast go over the top get some catches and then pitts a guy he he just yeah he, he got glue on his hands he can catch a lot of stuff <laughs> so i feel like uh we got different guys in each position that can go uh you saw mike strong make a big catch today over the top so yeah uh, I think Mike Strong really good. And we got we got a lot of players um, that got different skills. So, I mean, they can all come together and gel well. And we can have pieces in each different part that are work good. J.D., first day in, in full pads was today. Mm-hmm. You're going through the process of meetings, when to eat, when you're, uh, you know, when snack time is, when you go to bed and everything. How's it been the last week, especially, coming into this camp as a true professional after signing your contract and getting comfortable here and, more importantly, getting the sleep you need? Yeah, I'm still learning my, my routine um, each and every day, just trying to figure out what, what helps me pre-practice to get more warmed up, what helps me after practice um, to recover better. Still learning that each and every day. Um, but also just getting in bed. Uh, I'm in bed about 10.30 every day, so I'm not trying to stay up late, not trying to go play video games and all that. I'm, I'm trying to get my rest because I really do be tired at the end of the day. Uh, we got, like, like in college, a lot of the times people would complain about, like, our meet. Like, oh, we got a we got 45-minute meeting. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to go home. And, like, I, I mean, I ain't going to say I wasn't one of them guys. But um, now I'm like, okay, um, I'm calling my friends in college. Like, y'all better be appreciative of that because it ain't nothing. Like, you going to be in meetings for, like, five hours. So I'm like, every day. It ain't, it ain't no taking days off. Like, oh, we don't have a meeting today. No, you're going to have meetings and right, walkthroughs right, right. every single day. And you're going to have to be in treatment. You got to do everything. 
and it and it's no it's no I don't feel like it's it's you got to be there you getting fine so but it's a great welcome though to professional yeah. football it though, is right? it is for sure for sure Excellent. but yeah can't wait to watch you do your thing this year you can't miss him on the field he's wearing number one on his back he is a different make a difference maker thank you Josh Jones appreciate yes, sir. the time I appreciate y'all thank you JJ I spoke of the, I didn't say swagger I didn't want to say swagger in that interview but I call it confidence mm-hmm. like that and his father Gary who's been around football forever obviously Dre Bly his uncle Josh Downs I told him he knew what he was doing you know after his first year at North Carolina he knew he'd be playing on Sundays yeah I mean Reggie Wayne talked about it where he said you know a lot of rookies you got to tell them something three times Josh you have to tell them something twice Is that that's right? just you know he's he's got that that coach you know the, the, he's, he has like football's in his blood his, mm-hmm. his dad played his dad was a coach obviously you mentioned Dre Bly really good cornerback who by the way faced Reggie Wayne a couple times right. in his career right. how about that um, but he just gets it like he he gets the uh, what it takes to go through a pro training camp as a rookie, which like you know hearing from Michael Pittman, even his dad who played in the NFL, that can still be intimidating to come into a pro training camp, and you you don't know where you're going, you don't know who to talk to, you don't know the guy's names so you're sitting down with at this blue table, and all of a sudden they're asking you all these questions, and then hi, I'm Jeffrey Gorman, you know, <laughs> you finally get to introduce yourself to the important people around the building, but it, it can be disorienting, uh, you know, to be a rookie, but it seems like he's handled that that mental load of it pretty well. Certainly has. Larry, I know you're a big fan of him, and we got more to come from number one. I love that he, uh, you know, you, you have to have a little something in you if you say, yeah, I'll take that number one jersey, sure. <laughs> That's right? Absolutely, and I've been excited just how quick of an impact he's been able to make because he obviously had that procedure in the spring that limited his ability in OTAs and in minicamp, so to see how quickly he's jumped in to the fold and took a significant number of reps, especially today, very few plays, very few plays in which he was uh, off mm-hmm. the field when we got to team today. Don't forget, fans, coming up this week on the Colts Audio Network Radio Colts Camp Updates with Matt Taylor and J.J. Stankovic coming up on Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. We'll also have chats this week with Kylan Granson, Dallas Flowers, and Will Fries. Inside Football with Coach Rick Venturi returns this week on Wednesday with Rick's take on Colts training camp so far. Wednesday and Thursday of this week, we're going to have the Colts Daily Updates giving you the latest on the team on 93.5 and 107.5. The fans starting at 6 p.m. And on Friday, Colts Happy Hour with JMV gets you up to speed on Colts Camp with interviews with Shane Steichen and the Colts starting at 6 p.m. on 93.5. 93.5 and 107.5 the fan now it's a segment that i just came up with in my head i know you Let's guys go. love this oh we're ta- we're winding down the show but it's called who's gonna surprise you and i'm gonna give two two positions mm-hmm. jj i'm gonna start with you you give me one larry you give me one and we'll go back who's gonna surprise you this year on the offensive line bernard ryman there we go because Ooh. i think a lot of fans only remember the bad plays that Bernard Ryman had last year, the the sacks where he did get beat. Um, If you turn on the tape, Bernard Ryman played pretty well. He had some plays where he got beat. He absolutely did. And those led to play, you know, sacks, especially late in games. But the, when, you know, when, when I was talking to people around the building about Bernard and and they all say like those things, like if if he was just getting his butt kicked Mm -hmm. every single play, you'd be like, I don't think he's got it. Right. But he wasn't, especially on run plays. He was pretty good uh, second half of last season when the, the offensive line kind of got settled. They had their starting five. Everyone kind of got their feet under him. And he put on good weight Whew. this offseason. What, like 30 he, pounds? Yeah, I mean, he, he, he's bulked, a big man. he bulked up. And that's not just him, you know, going over to Portillo's and having an Italian beef. <laughs> oh, God. There you oh, go. Be messy. That's for you. Real uh, messy. <laughs> but he, he's, not, he's not just putting on bad weight. This is all good weight that he's putting on. And – the, the play strength that I think he will be at this year compared to last year will kind of be night and day. And I, I think he's going to surprise people who maybe wrote him off last year based just off of the sacks that he Larry, allowed. you want to piggyback on Bernard Ryman, or you want, you've got somebody well, else that's going to surprise you? Know, you. I'm, I'm excited for the development of Will Fries. You know, he's a guy who gained some valuable time last year. I think his development's going to be big. And I'm going with surprise, not in the sense that this is going to catch any, everyone off guard, but I do think that central to the success of all of this is Ryan Kelly returning to a Pro Bowl level this season, and I think he will do that. I think you have seen him just get back to this place of seeming like he is in his element out here on the field. He is the longest-tenured Colt on this roster. He is 
the central force within that offensive line. And he puts that group on his shoulders. And I think for Anthony Richardson to develop into the type of quarterback you want him to be at the professional level, that is certainly going to hinge on the success of who is who's playing center and the success of where Ryan Kelly is. And I think that he is embracing that role of being able to help uh, mentor and have Anthony Richardson there underneath him, under center. JJ, welcome again to Who's Going to Surprise You, the newest craze and game show that's on podcast. And oh, I'm going to yeah. go, mm -hmm. who's going to surprise you in the defensive backfield? Daryl Baker Jr. is a guy who I don't think anyone, you know, any You're Colts right. fans had on their radar. You're right. Um, but the Colts are encouraged by what he did during OTAs. And he went out there in, in Monday's practice. He had a couple pass breakups uh, in seven on seven. He's long, he's athletic, he's physical. Uh, you know, he's still got a ways to go. But right now, with Darius Rush and Juju Brents not practicing, uh, he and Dallas Flowers have pretty much consistently been the the, the top corners on this team on, on the outside with Kenny Moore being on the inside. Um, I'm interested in how he continues to develop because, again, you know, you're, you're talking about of all of the five guys who are competing for that job, right? You got the three draft picks, Brents Rush, Jalen Jones. You got Dallas Flowers, the guy who Colts fans know. I don't think a lot of people know about Daryl Baker Jr., but by the end of camp, you might need to know who this guy is. CBJ, hey, I like yeah, that. Lara, yeah. who's going to surprise you in the defensive backfield this year? Call up Rick Venturi. Where is he? Is he around <laughs> here somewhere? Because he and I have gone on and on about this uh, since late May. It is Darius Rush. Nice. And I know that, obviously, we haven't seen as much of him yet in camp the as you fifth, would have liked if, to. The fifth rounder, but obviously, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes, yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty significant investment from a, a draft capital perspective. But, you know, all of the things that they liked about Juju Brents, you also see in Darius Rush. And I think that from what we saw – when he was heavily active in OTAs back in the spring when we were at West, 50, West 56, when he does get back out here, I think you are immediately going to take notice of why he is someone that the Colts coveted in in this draft in the spring. So I'm excited to really see what he is able to bring. And there are a lot of guys I think that you can point to in that area. Also really eager to see what happens at safety because you haven't seen Julian Blackman yet out here at training camp. So you've seen uh, Rodney Thomas. Thomas is second, and Nick Cross, obviously, there at safety. So that's another intriguing position as well as we kind of get into the meat of training camp. By the way, cornerback, I mean, Kenny Moore might surprise some sure. people. Oh, he will. He I looks think. really good he out here right now. He's really good. And hearing from he's Ron Mike. He's playing Mike. loose. Like, yeah. He's back yeah. to playing loose. Like, you felt like last year, whether it was in the new scheme or, or you know, contract situation, whatever, tight. he was tight. not yeah. tight. Yeah. Yeah. And now he's like Kenny. Yeah. And, and, you know, he is he's dynamic, and you really feel that, that he is back to – you know, that kind of all pro or pro bowl form that he was in uh, 2021. It was really good to hear Gus Bradley last week say that, you know, Kenny sets the speed of practice. Oh, that's he a kind of sets the tempo uh, of practice and hearing that about, uh, about Kenny after everything that, you know, happened last year, we didn't have an interception. And like you guys said, he kind of played tight. It wasn't really anything close to the season that he expected or the season we've come to know out of Kenny Hearing that, I was like, okay, I, I think like I think we're back on the right track, and it's only been confirmed over the first week of practice. This is the Colts official podcast brought to you by our friends at WinBet. If you want to know about this football team, just shy of being in the huddle <laughs> and just shy of being in the defensive and offensive and special team meeting rooms, these are the two that you need to follow on Colts.com as well as a lot of other avenues, especially I love you guys on Twitter, at JJ. Is that Stankovitz. still what it's called? Or, or, or that's right, on, uh, on X. Oh, yeah. no. On the X-Files, whatever, whatever we call it. Yeah. You know where it is. Yeah. You can find them at Lara Overton, at J.J. Stankovitz. I always like to end on a personal note, and I mean that in the best regard. Lara, uh, you're kind of a freak show when it comes to your, <laughs> I don't think can be beaten streak of <laughs> running one mile, at least one mile a day. How uh, many days in a row have you got now at uh, that? Third. Listen to me, Colts fans, really quick. She runs at least one <laughs> mile a day. That is Sunday through Sunday for how many days now or in slash years? Uh, 1,369 days. 1,369 days Going back without to November, missing a day. That means travel. That means weddings. <laughs> that means receptions. That means births of, of 
<laughs> friends, kids. That means new dogs. That means everything in between. You never All miss a mile. Moments, yeah. And JJ, the reason I'm bringing it up is last night she came in and said, you're not going to believe this, guys. I fell asleep. I crashed for five hours on the couch, 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. And I thought, well, what the heck do I do? Do I stay here in my, in my shorts or do I wait it out a few more minutes until the clock strikes midnight so I can get my tomorrow's <laughs> mile run in? Okay, hold which on. Which is exactly what this crazy loon did I last need, night. I, no, She's no, no, running no, no. your neighborhood at midnight. There's <laughs> another story about you running in a Kroger parking lot. <laughs> That's correct. To hit, to hit their, your streak. That is correct. And what What's that okay, one? First of all. Shout out to my incredibly <laughs> supportive husband. Who Tucker. Made sure, yeah. So the, the story that JJ's referring to, last Monday we got into a travel debacle, as I know so many people are familiar with right now because of the airline chaos and everything. Our flight from Toronto got canceled. And I was trying to find a way back because I'm like, we got report day. I got to be back in <laughs> Indianapolis for Tuesday morning, right? Because we're riding in with three of the players on report day. Right. We got a ton of things. So we booked a flight that went from Toronto to Cincinnati, booked a rented a car in Cincy, and then drove to Indianapolis <laughs> and got our car at the Indianapolis airport. So in all of this, our flight was initially supposed to leave at like 2 o'clock out of Toronto. So I thought, oh, I'll have plenty of time. Well, then the flight was canceled in the morning, so I spent most of the day trying to just get on a flight. And now we're like, we got to get to the airport. So he's like, what's your plan? I was like, we'll be home in plenty of time. We'll get it done. Flight got delayed, this and that. So we're driving home. And we're starting to see the time on the clock. Dan's starting to get hungry. It's about 1130. And he's like, what are you going to do? I was like, well, wherever you stop to eat, I'll just run. He goes, are you going to run what you're in? And I was like, yeah, I'll figure it out. Like, (laughs) you know. So I, so yeah, surely enough, there's a, you know, cause Kroger parking lots pretty are big. pretty well lit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shout out to the Kroger parking lot in Batesville, Indiana. Kept the that street was, going. Kept the street going. Ended it at like 1159. Yeah. So I've, ha- I've cut it close guys. What I have learned is I got to start knocking out the beginning of the day because when I procrastinate, I get all too close to snapping the streak. So that's the lesson to be learned. A talented, a talented, hey, beautiful person, but you. also crazy as a loon. Absolutely. That's that's our very <laughs> own Lara Overton. Hey, guys, one quick thing. <laughs> please uh, give just, it. Well, we're, you know, we always give shout outs to people who always stop yeah. us that are listening to the podcast. Yesterday was a career highlight moment. I tweeted about it, or I, I X'd it. Is that what you do you, now uh, on this uh, thing? I don't yeah, know. What is that, JJ? You X file it? Is um, that, what uh, is you it? gave it. Yeah, X yeah. going to give it to you. Uh, <laughs> there we yeah. go. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, but I got stopped. There was a family over here, and I heard my name, and I turned around, and there was a little girl who asked me to sign her football. And I said, Aww. are you sure you want me to sign your football? She's like, yes, please. And uh, there were players signing, and she asked me to sign it. And it truly was just like such a, a heartwarming moment. Eleanor, thank you so much. You truly made my day um, so special. Good luck in your upcoming cross-country season. You're amazing. Um, I hope to see you back here at training camp because that was such a such an awesome moment. Way to go, girl. Keep running. Lara <laughs> Overton's fans are everywhere. And by the way, nice job with Pro Football Focus earlier uh, Thank you. today. Thank you so uh, much, You can find friend. that on their site, however yeah. it is, that Lara sat down with them. And, J.J., I know you have multiple times in the past. Guys, you're the best in the business. I'm going to cut out of here now because we got a lot more practice camps. Excuse me, a lot of more practice. This is at camp to talk about and whatnot. Plus, we're right around the corner. We'll all be up in Buffalo doing it for sort of real. So, hey, I, this is this week between now and the uh, and the first week of January. This is one of three weeks between now and the first week of January where there is not a Colts game. Wow. Wow. Think about that. Stat. He just digs them up. He takes his little shovel and digs up stats <laughs> like nobody's. <laughs> nobody go. else. Let's JJ's thinking of it. Guys, I could talk all afternoon, but these horse flies are driving me nuts right now. <laughs> I'm getting bad. bombarded by them up bad. here at Westfield Camp. For JJ Stankovitz, for Lara Overton, I'm Gorman. We are brought to you by our friends at WinBet. This is the Colts official podcast. Your latest news always available on Colts.com. We'll talk to you next week.